I mean, especially the Bengal Chamber. And uh, we would like to say that uh, as I was looking at the uh, different profiles, uh, of course, uh, we have, as uh, I'm going to just mention, we have a large number of uh, very skilled uh, people who will be addressing right from uh, the stakeholders are with you, uh, right from uh, Dr. Chakravarti, Dr. Shomesh Dajgupta, uh, Mr. Agarwal, Mr. Khaitan, they would of course be addressing their very specific uh, topics and uh, areas. But before we go there, I always felt that it is necessary to have an overview of truly what is happening and what is happening across the country. Uh, of course, we acknowledge, it's, it's acknowledged that uh, every industrial zone and every industrial belt has its own, uh, has its own uh, uh, special problems and special advantages and special way of working. And uh, we do accept that uh, Durgapur is an industrial town. So its problems are a little different. And we have, if we have here industries, I believe I've just is going through the list of the participants here. And I find that we have from right from the iron steel industry to mining, coal mining, eastern coal fields to uh, power plants to general industry like graphite India, many others are here. So there are problems which are common, there are problems which may not be common, but it's a sharing of such information is important. Coming back to the overall picture of the of the country as we see right now. Uh, of course, the numbers that I'll be talking to you would be known to all of you. But you see, uh, prior to prior to the lockdown period, we were not at all in comfortable zone, meaning that uh, uh, the uh, GDP growth of the country was expected to be between 4.5 to 5 percent for this last fiscal. Uh, of course, then we suddenly stopped sometime around end of March, so we still don't have the full picture of what exactly is the GDP growth. But subsequently, when uh, governor of RBI mentioned that uh, the GDP growth for this country is expected to be 1.9%, okay, it is 1.9, but the World Bank has said it is 1.5%. So it's 1.9, 1.5, both these figures, even if we accept what uh, governor of RBI has said, these figures are truly, truly worrying figures because 1.9% GDP growth is truly indicates a huge, huge, huge recession. But the, but the again, the bright side of that is, of course, that uh, uh, we also has been told by the governor of RBI in his last uh, statement that uh, GDP of 21-22 is expected to be over 7.4%, which shows that if we can tide over this one 12-month period of difficult time, we should be able to um, come out okay. So if having said that, uh, what are the real problems that we are seeing all over the country? All over the country, we are at the moment in technology, as I just mentioned, we are seeing major industrial recession, major drop in growth and major industrial recession. And uh, there are different problems. Actually, for example, mines. See, I was just noticing and reading the other day that coal uh, mines, for example, are uh, are full. I mean, they have they are mined and there's there's no offtake, which means their mine mined coal is getting piled up. Power plants have different set of problems because uh, as the power is being has dropped sharply, I mean they have to cut down their power load and to revamp it. I mean all these are their offtake of coal has also dropped because of that. So all these are creating link problems. Of course, we have. I mean, all industry all over the country has serious liquidity problem, which is much more, uh, much more stronger in the MME sector, but very serious liquidity problem. And again, um, this liquidity problem, this almost starts a chain reaction because this liquidity problem is creating a major breakdown in supply chain, which of course applies and is applicable to almost all industry all over the country. And uh, then, uh, uh, so there are some serious issues and government has been addressing, while we accept that the, the lockdown was a necessity and uh, to sp uh, stop the spread of COVID-19 and uh, we have seen examples from uh, China, we have seen examples from Singapore, from Hong Kong, 
which are COVID free right now, um, uh, and uh, not China really, but Hong Kong, Singapore, they are COVID free. And uh, so, uh, looking at them, it's, it is agreed that lockdown was necessary, but it has truly hurt or hurting the industry. Apart from the liquidity problems, uh, uh, so to get out of that, we always believe and uh, that uh, unless unless it is unless it is unless it is unless it is Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, unless we have we address this uh, issue of opening of the plants, which also is recognized by the government, so they are trying to open in phases. Now, whether whether this phased opening of having thirty percent, whether it's practical, impractical, so how can it be done uh, without the transportation, with the normal uh, transport mode and infrastructure not working? Whether it really uh, will be set, set up a new set of problem or not will be discussed and deliberated on later on much more. But it is absolutely necessary that the industry should go back into its operation and to get out of this liquidity problem. Uh, of course, this this liquidity problem and lack of orders, lack of offtake, all these are creating also serious threat of retrenchment or and um, if we are seeing situations where this might bring some of the MSMEs to stop their operations altogether, this is truly a serious threat. And as I have just mentioned, the supply chain has broken down. But another new set of problem has come up where industries which depend very seriously or very in a very major way on the migrant labor. What has happened with migrant labor today, they are so terrified. Even if they go back home now, as has been arranged, is arranged that the special train will take them home. But will they come back? Will they come back so easily? Will they come back so quickly? And if they don't, that's going to create another set of problems for construction industries and many other industries, many, which uses migrant data. So there have been some steps which as I, I, we see that has been taken. One of the first major steps which was taken by the government of India, which I think um, is um, very significant, is they have allowed movement of all sorts of goods. Unless that happens, in any case supply chain was not possible or in any case uh, uh, taking this thing away was not possible. So movement of goods have been opened. Liquidity. There's one interesting situation is that um, RBI has by reducing their <coughs> reverse repo rate <coughs> and also the CRR requirements had made substantial amount of money available with the banks and the banks unless the uh, accounts are stressed the banks are giving i mean this i can confirm the banks are actually giving about 10 percent of their existing uh, credit limits uh, is being given by the banks to almost all industries but of course the bank has the distribution of up to what amount they will give so people can address that to solve the liquidity problem and, uh, and the other point that was came up in some other forum is that the government actually holds up the money of many of the companies saying that okay this performance base this is this base is that base so those money should be released at the earliest i mean that would help the industry the retrenchment uh, the problem is that unless the companies are not are allowed to work uh, the retrenchment is becoming more and more and more and more severe chances of retrenchment to avoid this the company should be allowed to pay certain recognized minimum, minimum there sh should be certain amount. It is a question of whether you accept a retrenchment, whether you consider a retrenchment solution, or whether you consider wage cut, salary cuts as a uh, solution. Even Ambani's have started cutting the salaries. Uh, whether you consider, whether you do that to uh, save this, to pass this difficult 12 month period, or whether you sink by trying to pay the whole amount of money is a judgment, is a decision that has to be taken and considered. As we, uh, as we open up, there's a danger that, this is a very serious danger that as we open up, 
all rules of safety norms should be broken. And if that happens, this uh, virus is going to come back virulently once more. And there are people who here today who can discuss on this subject as to truly what are the mandatory steps that has to be taken to ensure the safety. There are surely there are way forward because we actually it is not that uh, we see only a dark tunnel in front of us. We see bright light also because as the RBI governor has said that the um, growth for 20, 2021, 22 would be more than 7.4%, uh, which actually means that all of us will have to share the pain for some time to be uh, able to come out of this peculiar crisis, which is one of our own. But there's something where something has been shown by this. This is also because we have some uh, environmental professional uh, present here today. This is something which has been shown that um, because of the lockdown, it has shown that all the environmental issues, this pollution, has been a major change. You can even see, I was seeing in the paper the other day, the uh, picture which showed that from Ludhiana, you can see the range of Himalaya with uh, snow-covered Himalayas. I mean, this is amazing, which means that uh, if we do control, if we bring back the industry, the environmental specialist should tell us very clearly what we should address properly to ensure that um, the environment get polluted as it was. In fact, uh, one of the most polluted cities in the world is was at one time, a few years back, was Beijing. And Beijing is possibly one of the cleanest cities today. So it can be done. I mean, that's something that's important. So having said this, uh, it would be important and interesting to listen to all the all the specialists safety on what we what we should do post lockdown of course it has been extended for next 15 days i'm not sure i think uh, durgapur also durgapur Asans of belt also is under red zone now because it's part of the extended Bardhan area uh, district so they are also under uh, uh, i believe they are also under red zone so how do we go forward? What do we do? How do we solve this uh, liquidity crisis? How do we take safety precautions so that it does not happen or get repeated once more? Is what is going to be deliberated on and is what's going to be discussed in detail today. Gentlemen, I truly appreciate your participation today and we would like to listen to all of you, take feedback from you so that we can in turn take it up with the government, government of West Bengal, and tell them that this is what we see is the ground reality and this is what we see the response and the need of the industry from Durgapur Asansal Belt and from there on we can put up a position paper also with the government to take <laughs> action. Thank you very very much for being here with us today. Thank you. I'm done. You can take it forward. Thank you sir. Uh Thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us again. Uh, and uh, just to uh, communicate to you, uh, since all of you were probably not there during the time when we started, um, we are keeping the participants on mute, and only the speakers who are speaking will be kept on unmute. For the opening session, we are not having any interactive session. If you have any questions for Mr. Sen, you may write to the Bengal Chamber, to Shujishmita, that is Shujishmita at bengalchamber.com or to Shankalpita, S-A-N-K-A-L-P-I-T-A, Shankalpita at bengalchamber.com. We will check with Mr. Sen and we will revert to you. So as we move on, we, our first session is on the health aspects. And we have a very renowned cardiologist, Dr. Robin Chakraborty, who's also the chairperson of the health committee of the Bengal Chamber and senior vice Cha chairman of the Medica Hospitals. He is with us. So we would request Dr. Chakraborty to take forward the next session, uh, sh uh, sharing with us what are the health aspects we should keep in mind, uh, particularly in industrial area when we start the operations in plants and factories and mines. To Dr. Chakraborty, please. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. So uh, it's very good that we are here today. This morning, we are talking to the people involved in the various industrial units. It's very important for us to understand that people from industrial areas, 
uh, from various manufacturing units, factories, and other organizations. You are all our great assets and resources. You come from different religion, from different caste, from different states, from different cultures, and different beliefs. But it's very important that you, are, you all are engaged in various activities in group and as an individual. And therefore, during this uh, period of unprecedented crisis uh, in the world, when an unknown infection called corona infection or COVID-19 virus infection has devastated the entire world. Uh, and at the same time, our own people like yourselves and many of you are, are some of you might be affected, some of uh, you might be handicapped of not uh, doing your everyday work and thus our country is profoundly suffering for various reasons. So it is very important for all of you uh, to, to understand little bits and pieces from the health point of view regarding COVID-19 or uh, coronavirus. So what exactly is the corona? Corona is basically a large family of virus which may cause illness in animals and humans. In humans, several coronavirus have been known for many years. They used to cause respiratory, respiratory infection and some kind of respiratory abnormality. We call it acute or middle respiratory syndrome. But this COVID-19 is very unique because it is a mutant of a virus which normally goes from animal to, to man, but it is now being transmitted from man to man because of very unknown a mutation, which is still the researchers, the scientists, the physician, microbiologists are, uh, are, are, are um, uh, sort of waiting to, to discover. COVID-19 in particular is an infectious disease caused by most recently discovered coronavirus. This new virus were unknown before the outbreaks which began in Wuhan, China in December 2019. And it is now a pandemic affecting the entire world. And that is very unfortunate. What we need to know, the common symptoms and, and signs, as we have been talking again and again, this, the, firstly, you need to understand that this virus is not a very powerful virus. It is a rather weak virus. It has got some, some, prop, some peculiarities. Like it can be easily be destroyed by soap water, by sanitizer. So you can easily understand that the, that the, the, the um, strength of the virus is not very, very powerful. But the problem of that it transmits uh, uh, without creating any symptom. And that is a problem. So the people who, uh, who may not be uh, having any symptom, but still they are able to transmit the virus from one to other. And in certain group of patients, especially in the elderly individual above 60 years, or patients with pre-existing diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, cancer, or other infection, they are prone to get to this virus. And once they get this COVID-19, infection, they can be complicated. In that case, the, the, uh, the uh, effect of the virus can be so profound that it can cause even mortality. And that is the reason why we need to understand. The overall sort of, you know, mortality is not very high. It is roughly about 2 to 3 percent or maybe maximum 5 percent, certainly not more than high. Furthermore, 80 percent of them, they actually remain well. Only 15 percent, they may have some problem, which again, they rake up. But then, uh, as I said, that uh, only 20 people may be ill and difficulty having difficulty in breathing, but elderly people, as I said, with high blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, and cancer can have serious problems. Therefore, anyone who can get COVID-19 infection uh, can must take all the precaution, and also they are uh, they can transmit the virus at every age. How does it spread? People catch COVID-19 from others who have the virus. The disease spreads primarily from person to person through small droplet from the mouth, from nose, which are expelled when a person with COVID-19 coughs, sneezes, or spits. These droplets, you have to understand very clearly, these droplets are actually relatively heavy. They do not float in the air for a long period of time. They, they're heavy droplets, so they go to the surface very easily. So it doesn't remain in the air for a longer time. Do not travel far. Uh, you know, in the air, it quickly sinks to the ground. So people can catch COVID-19 if they breathe these droplets from a person. Oh, stop. Why is, it right? <laughs> is it all right? Uh, this is why uh, it is important to stay at least one meter away from others. These droplets can land on objects 
and surface in your industry, in your factory. I think some of you should mute your uh, your uh, computer. These droplets can land on objects and surfaces around the person, such as on tables, on doorknobs, on on the steel uh, the plates, on hand handrails. Uh, therefore, if you if someone touches those uh, those those areas, like in a table, chair, you know, doorknobs, handrail, they can actually carry the infection themselves. If they touch their eyes, nose, and mouth, it can it can go inside their body. That is why it is important to wash your hands regularly with soap and water and clean with sanitizer at least it's more than 6% alcohol based. COVID-19 mainly spreads through respiratory droplets expelled by someone who is coughing, sneezing or has other symptoms such as fever and tiredness. Many people with COVID-19 may experience with mild symptoms. This is particularly true in the early stages of the disease. So if you get early, in the early stage, if you get mild symptoms like mild fever or even dry cough, do not ignore it because it has been seen very clearly that in the industrial area, in the manufacturing unit, with mild fever, you at times may ignore it. But if you report to your physician or to your higher authority that you get mild fever, and if your medical attention can be brought in at the very early stage, we have got plenty of data to suggest that many such people who reported at the early stage, they actually recover completely. As I said earlier, that this virus is not a very powerful virus. So early reporting at the early stage with early symptoms like mild fever, dry cough, do not wait till you get a really breathlessness. That means the disease has gone a little advanced stage. It is also possible to catch COVID-19 from someone who has just a mild cough and does not feel ill. Many people may remain asymptomatic, but carries the virus, and therefore it is important for, for, for the manufacturing unit to understand that if someone uh, in, your, in your office, in your organization, uh, is having no symptom, but their relations with having COVID-19 positive, they should come and report to you that yes, they came in contact with someone with COVID-19, so that you and he and your organization can take adequate protection and precautions. These are, these precautions are practicing hand and respiratory hygiene. Please remember and understand very clearly, this COVID-19 virus goes inside the body through hand and through the respiratory, through the nose and mouth inside the lung. So that is the reason why you should have a hand hygiene and respiratory hygiene. And because we put a mask, so we protect the virus to go inside the, the inside or in the lung, respiratory hygiene and hand so that you do not touch. It's important for all times and the best way to protect others and yourself. And at the same time, it is important to maintain social distancing at least for a meter or three feet between yourself and others. Because when you are standing away from somebody by one meter or three feet, then if someone coughs and sneezes, as I told this virus is very heavy virus. It doesn't float freely in the air. It drops, it sinks to the ground. So it cannot travel at least you know, more than two feet. Therefore, it drops. So you take one feet extra and maintain the social distancing. If someone infected person may not be may not yet be exhibiting symptoms to their symptom, or it may be mild, maintaining a social distancing is a good idea to protect the people around them. But the question is that if one of your colleagues or someone in your organization think that they, he or she uh, came in close contact with someone with COVID-19 positive, what, you, what they should do? If you have been in close contact with someone with COVID-19, you may be infected. Close contact means that you live with, what is close contact? It means, close contact means you live with or have been sitting of less than one meter from those who have the disease. In these cases, the best way to stay at home if you become ill, even with very mild symptom, you must remain self-isolate. I will clarify that a little bit more. Even if you do not think that you have been exposed to COVID-19, but develop symptoms, then self-isolate and monitor yourself by looking at your temperature, looking for the dry cough, and having, having any breathing difficulty. These three symptoms you should monitor. You, you are more likely to infect others. Remember that even if when you are in 
isolation, you are more likely to infect others in the early stage of the disease. When you just have mild symptoms like mild fever or even body ache or dry cough, you, you easy early self-isolation is extremely important. If you do not have any symptom, but have been exposed to an infected person, then self-quarantine for 14 days is important. Now, what is the meaning, what is the difference between self-isolation and self-quarantine? Should be very clear. Isolation is an important measure taken by those who have COVID-19 symptoms to avoid infecting others in the factory, in the manufacturing unit, in the community, or including inside your own family. Self-isolation basically meant for those people who are having symptoms due to COVID-19 infection. Self-isolation is when a person who is experiencing fever, cough, and other COVID-19 symptoms stay at home and does not go to work, school, factory, in organizations, manufacturing unit, or any other public place. This can be voluntarily or based on his or her healthcare provider's recommendation. However, if you live in an area with, let us say, malaria and dengue fever, then you should also know that people who are susceptible to COVID-19, they're equally susceptible to malaria and dengue fever. So that has to be borne in mind. If a person is in self-isolation, it is because he or she is ill, but not severely ill, requiring medical attention. You should remain in a relatively large, well-ventilated room with proper hand hygiene and toilet facilities. If this is not possible, place beds at least one meter apart. Keep at least one meter from others, even from your own family members. Monitor your symptoms daily. Isolate for 14 days, two weeks, even if you feel healthy. If you develop difficulty in breathing, contact your doctor, your physician, or if your uh, you know, medical unit of your factory or your organization or your healthcare provider immediately. Call them first, if possible. Stay positive and energized by keeping in touch with loved ones by phone and online. At this point, I will also request the HR team of every factory and manufacturing unit to motivate your worker, your people, your colleagues to remain positive, to remain energized, and also explain to them that COVID-19 is not a dangerous virus. It's the only problem it spreads quietly, silently, and therefore the community at large may be affected. So if you take some very basic precaution, you will be safe, your community will be safe, and your organization will be safe. So what should you do if you have no symptom, but you think that you got COVID exposure? As I told, exactly the same. So no. if you, <coughs> I told, I'm repeating again. If you have symptom, then you go for self-isolation. If you do not have symptom, but you think that you have exposure to COVID-19, but you're asymptomatic, then you go for self-quarantine. Self-quarantine means to separate yourself from others because you have been exposed to someone with COVID-19, even though you do not have any symptom. During self-quarantine, again, you monitor yourself for symptoms like fever, uh, dry cough, body ache, and in case you feel symptomatic, then you go for self-isolation, like stay in a large, well-ventilated room with hand hygiene toilet facilities, maintain distance from others, and monitor your symptom more closely. And again, remain still quarantined for 14 days, even if you feel healthy. Do not come out. That 14 days is very important because that is the incubation period of the virus. If you develop difficulty in breathing, contact your healthcare provider immediately. Again, stay positive. Then the question is that what are the difference between self-quarantine, self-isolation, and self-distancing? Understand very clearly three terms, self-quarantine, self-isolation and self-distancing. Quarantine means restricting activities or separating people who are not ill themselves, but may have been exposed to COVID-19. So they are not symptomatic. They are not ill themselves, but might have been exposed to COVID-19. The goal here is to prevent the spread of the disease at a time when people just develop symptoms. Isolation means separating people 
who are having symptoms, ill with symptoms of COVID-19, therefore may be infectious to prevent the spread of the disease. Physical distancing means phys remain physically apart and World Health Organization recommends keeping at least one meter distance from others. This is a general measure that we learned from other countries, particularly from China, Korea, Singapore, and other countries. And it has been found to be extremely effective and helpful to prevent the spread of coronavirus infection. It is very important for us to recognize. What should you do to protect yourself and your colleague and to prevent spread of infection? When you are in the organization, in the factory, in the manufacturing unit, stay aware of the latest information of COVID-19 outbreak. Also, you should know you can reduce your chance of being infected, spreading like uh, infection of COVID-19 by taking some simple precautions. What are those simple precautions? Regularly and thoroughly clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub. To the HR people, I must request that please provide a good sanitizer, alcohol-based sanitizer, good mask. You need not have in a 95 mask. That is not required because that is required only for healthcare workers who deal with the patients. Or, but not for the, for the common people who are otherwise asymptomatic. So wash with soap and water and wash for at least for 20 seconds. Washing your hands with soap and water and, and using alcohol-based hand rub, it kills the virus. Remember, virus completely destroyed by doing so. Maintain social distancing of one meter. When someone coughs, sneezes or speaks, they spray small liquid droplets from their nose, from their mouth, which may contain virus. If you are close to them, you can breathe in the droplet, including COVID-19 virus, if the person has a disease. So you need to have a mask. Ideally, a three-layer mask is recommended. You did not have N95 mask, a three-layer mask is fine. So you can probably put sort of one maybe on the top of that, another one, and, and ensure that it is there on, and definitely in the factory, in the manufacturing unit, every worker must wear a mask. It is very important. Also avoid going to crowded places. When you go to canteen to have food, then ensure that there is a social distancing. And during the service, you ensure that the people are wearing masks. When you take food, remain away, finish the food, and then wash your hands, wash your mouth, and then get back to your mask. And while doing so, maintain the social distancing. It is extremely important when you're in the factory. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Wear gloves. And these gloves, so that you know, sometimes it goes through the hand. Be very careful about that. Hands touch many, many surfaces. And in the factory, you, you deal with a lot of surfaces. Like, you know, many, many bodies, many units are there. It's extremely uh, important for you to remain careful because those surfaces may be contaminated and that can come to the hand. So wearing a, a gloves would be extremely helpful in such a situation. But remember, with gloves, you should not touch your mouth. That should not touch your face and touch your eyes. It's very important. Make sure that people around you, they follow good respiratory hygiene. This means covering your mouth and nose with your bent elbow or tissue when you cough or, snow or, or sneeze. Then dispose, they use tissue immediately, wash your hand, use mask, and drop that spread virus. Be very careful. By protect your own people around you from not only from COVID-19, you also protect them from other virus like flu virus and, and similarly many such virus which go through, through kind of cough and sneeze. When you are at home, stay safe and maintain all this protocol. If you have fever, cough and difficulty in breathing while you are in the factory, you immediately seek medical attention. You either you can call by telephone or contact them and, and, and ask for help and keep up to date about the information from your own unit. So all factories and manufacturing unit must have kind of a notification and circular with little bit of information, some basic thing, basic discipline about hand hygiene, respiratory hygiene, and social distancing to everybody working in the factory. How long does it take after exposure to COVID-19 virus to get symptoms? Roughly one to 14 days. So 14 days is the day that has been recommended. Even after you recover, do not think that everything has gone. Still. Another 14 days is recommended to come back to, uh, to, to join your work. How long the, the virus sur survive on the surface? It is very important for you to understand when you are in a factory. The most important thing to know about coronavirus on surface is 
that they can easily be cleaned with common household disinfectant. Very simple. Little bit of Lysol soap, you clean the sur surface, it will go. But it may remain on the, on the table, on the plastics, on the chair, on sofa, on stainless steels, and many such ob objects. Normally, it can survive for up to 72 hours on plastics and stainless steel. I'm repeating again, on plastics and stainless steel, it, the virus remains alive for three days, but less than four hours on coppers and less than 24 hours on cardboard. So this is the kind of standard thing what everybody in the manufacturing unit and factories should remember. As always, clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or wash with soap and water, and also clean these, these areas by something like Lysol and other disinfectant. Don't take disinfectant inside your body because then you will be killed. Don't do that. Everything used with your protection, which is extremely important. And if one very common thing will be important, maybe inside the factory there will be shops and, and kind of other sort of areas where you have to go. When you go to grocery shop or other kind of shop, again, you maintain one meter distance from others. Avoid touching your eyes, mouth and nose and sanitize your handle of shopping trolley, baskets, the, uh, the handle of your basket before shopping. Once you come back home, wash your hands thoroughly. Also after handling and storing the purchased product. There is no confirmed case. Remember, the COVID-19 virus, the coronavirus does not get transmitted, does not get transmitted through food and food packaging. So do not think that the food package also carries the virus. So what you do when you get the, the, the food, if it's in a plastic, you ensure that you take the, the food out and dispose of the plastic, but put it, try to sort of clean the plastic with Lysol and other kind of thing after taking out the, 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 the foods. Therefore, the plastic itself uh, you know, is free of virus. How to wash your fruits and vegetables? Fruits and vegetables, they do not carry virus. Fruits and vegetables are important component of healthy diet for nutrition. Wash them the same way you do normally under any circumstance. Before handling them, wash your own hand with soap and water, then wash fruits and vegetables thoroughly with clean water. Do not wash fruits and vegetables and food material by sanitizer or by soap and water. You clean thoroughly with clean water. That is very important. Even you can eat some of the fruits to draw. That is no problem for that. You need not boil the fruits. Some people may think, well, I can take the apple, but I should boil and then take the apple. No, you can take a raw apple, but clean it properly with clean water. That is important. Any, many people think that antibiotic may help. Antibiotic has no role in COVID-19 infection because COVID-19 is a virus. Antibiotic works in bacterial infection. Like, pneumo, like pneumococcal pneumonia, like streptococcus infection. But COVID-19 is a virus, so antibiotics do not work against virus. So, but, but people, physicians, they give antibiotic once a patient is in the hospital. That is because to prevent a secondary bacterial infection to a person who is already infected with COVID-19. That is a doctor's decision, a physician's decision. You yourself do not volunteer to take antibiotic thinking that it will prevent COVID-19 infection. Answer is no. There is no vaccine available as of today. People are working on that. Last week in Oxford University, they started working. Hopefully, we'll get sometimes uh, this is available to us. So I'm going to finish my talk before my summary is to all of you that I know that as I discussed in detail about how this uh, COVID-19 spread, people could catch COVID-19 infection by touching contaminated surfaces, objects in the factory, in the industries, in the manufacturing unit, and take all the precautions, which I explained very, very clearly. And also you should know that very important that you should have, in addition to whatever I said, why the employees and organizers need to Think about COVID-19 infection. Why you should talk this morning about it? Because there is risk. The people attending your, your factory, your organization, might be unwillingly bringing COVID-19 infection to your meeting, to your workplace. Therefore, it is important for them to understand. 
COVID-19 is a mild disease for most of the people, but some of you can actually remain very ill, very sick, and even cause death. That is, remember, one out of five people may have actually significant symptom. That is the reason in factory manufacturing unit, we should talk about it. And finally, we should also understand that many people, many of you, in addition to your work, you also travel a lot. You have to go to other places to so avoid such thing at the moment. And let, I'm sure it will settle by another couple of weeks. By that time, you should, you should be able to have a normal and comfortable life. During this meeting or even, you, you, as, I, as I'm talking, you amongst yourself build trust that yes, yes, we should remain well. And you should encourage everybody about regular hand washing, maintaining sanitization, and maintaining social distancing, encouraging participants to cover their face with masks, and also encourage that we will remain healthy and your organized organization remain healthy. So that is what all I personally think would be important. And while before traveling, you should take precautions. While traveling, again, you should take precautions. And when you and your employee return from traveling, again, ensure that they follow the entire protocol during, uh, during uh, uh, when they report back to, to the office, they should remember all these points. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Uh, Dr. Chakraborty, I know that you are rushed for time and we also have our next speaker, Mr. Shomesh Dashgupta online with us. Uh, but before that, just one question for you, uh, which has come on the chat, that it, is it possible that the virus coming from COVID-19 hospital or unit can kind of be contaminated, contaminated by wastewater discharge or freshwater resources in nearby locality? Sorry, say it again. Uh, is it possible that the virus coming from COVID-19 hospital or unit uh, can be contaminated by wastewater discharge? Yeah, actually, I, 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 I actually had a slide on of, of uh, child infection units. I just uh, omitted that. Yes, answer is yes. Um, if again, the, the very, for a very small child, they are prone to get infection because they, because largely it is a kind of a fight between the immunity of the person and the COVID and the strength of the COVID-19 infection. In a small child, especially you know, premature born child, children, they may have less immunity. Or children having other infection, they may also have less immunity. In those situations, it can also come. Even from the waste paper, the children should be kept you know, away from this kind of thing, and they also should be uh, taken adequate precaution. Nobody should think that they should be free to roam, to roam around. Does it mean that uh, wastewater discharge and freshwater resources can also be contaminated by that, by COVID-19? It can carry the virus. Yes, because most of the waste, waste bin or whatever waste box, they are basically plastics. So these plastics can contain, if the virus remains there for about 72 hours. So I personally think that every day you change it. You change it and clean it properly with Lysol. And if you do that, the virus will go. It is not a very strong virus. If you clean it properly every day, then obviously the waste box, the waste papers, and other things will be will be free of that. Tissue paper, however, is is very safe in COVID nineteen infection. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have few more questions. What we yeah, will do you. is we will uh, you know can, archive these questions. I, got, I, got, share, I, got, I know share with you and come back with your answers with the participants. Sure, but can I leave because I have to I have to go. Yeah, I know, I know, sir. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. We will email you the questions we have. Right, and then I'll reply, uh, reply by, sir, anybody, yes, sir. everybody's happy. If anyone has any question, <laughs> feel free to send a mail to Angana, and I'm sure I'll reply to Angana, and you will get all the uh, answers from of all your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for thank being you with very us. Much for being a very wonderful audience. Thank you. I, will, I also sir. need to leave. Yes, sir. Thank you. So as we mentioned, you can send your questions. We know there are a few hygiene related questions which we could not kind of address uh, due, due to paucity of time. You can email to shuchishmit at bengalchamber.com or shankulpit at bengalchamber.com. We will check with Dr. Chakraborty and send the, share the answers with all. So we move on to our next speaker, who uh, Mr. Shomesh Dashgupta. Mr. Shomesh Dashgupta is the chairperson of the People Management Committee of the Bengal Chamber. And he is also the Group President and CCRO, uh, representing India Power Corporations Lim Corporation Limited. 
so, uh, so he's one of the uh, stakeholders in this region also. So we would invite Mr. Das Gupta to share the HRIR issues which need to be followed during this particular situation. So we invite Mr. Das Gupta. Good morning, Angana. Good morning. Is okay? My uh, audio is okay? Yes, sir. Your audio is okay. Okay. Actually, good morning, everybody. Uh, at the outset, uh, let me congratulate Angona and his team, and her team to organize such a wonderful webinar. It is very important because we are just two days before the uh, third phase of lockdown withdrawal, that is the 4th of May. And already we are in 10 day from 20th April in the, enjoying the relaxation in lockdown period in Assam Solaria. So before starting my presentation to you, I have a two capacity here. One is, you know, as Angona was telling, I was managing the organization called India Power Corporation Limited, which is a 100 years old power utility in that area. We are responsible to distribute general power from one part of Dubapur and the entire running range, Pandal, Barakor, around 680 square kilometers. So it's a 100 years old organization. Second, as I'm representing as the chairperson of the People Management Committee, from the HR side, we have some state wise idea. State was state. Hello, state. Hello, is it okay? We can hello? hear you, sir. We can hear you, sir. Yeah. So, so that, that in, the, in the perspective of India Power, what I'm at the when the 24th of March, when the COVID-19 was initially the lockdown was started. Before that, the all people have no idea about the crisis of the entire entire thing. It means the challenges of the entire pandemic. So I am telling you because 90% people or 100% people who are here today, we have no idea what is this COVID-19 virus. And we have not seen what should be the real profile of a lockdown and what means the social distance. So the entire thing called social distance, the lockdown, the impact of COVID-19 is a real uncertain. So for the first thing, we have to come across, we have to fight against the mindset in terms of the, our in terms of the awareness so starting from the decision maker very senior people in the organization and in the grassroots level worker nobody has any clarity in terms of the crisis people are asking question it is for how many days it is for how many months people are asking the question what will happen after the lockdown people will asking the question actually what we should during this period and there are a lot of experts are telling a lot of things across televisions and different newspapers, but people have no clarity actually what is the consequence of that part. So first of all, as a power company, we have to start our own job from 24th of March, where you perhaps know in, in power company in Asensor, we have 23 substations and also we have a one area load display center. So generally we purchase power from the national grid and we distribute the power in the area. So from the very first day, it's a challenge to the organization how to maintain the stability in the organization there so that the essential service cannot be disturbed. With that idea, our entire leadership team in Asansor along with corporate, we have a plan how to manage our substation. It means the management of the ship duties, about the logistic, about the accommodation of the particular people. And you know that this April and March is a very storm prone area. And Asansol is famous for that. So anytime there may be a storm and we have to ready for that. So the maintenance team for the network management, maintenance team for the operational maintenance and also the routine jobs. So from the very first day, our people is geared up. So that is before the 20th April. That is from 24th of March, our entire team from the very first day were in the job. So we have the experience how to manage with the crisis. That time, I have to share some good thing with you that our company has taken a decision that time that in spite of paying money to the Prime Minister Fund, Chief Minister Fund, why not with our own support, we do something for the poor people that, and distressed people that area. Because we believe to be with the people, to stay with the people. For that purpose, we have decided every day we should distribute at least 800 to 1,000 food ingredient packets all over our license area. It means it's a huge job. Till today, we have covered more than 18,000 poor and distressed people in different parts of different parts of our license area where along in collaboration with Ramakrishna Mission in some 
somewhere in the local management, some of the local political leaders, we keep on distributing this rice, wheat, potatoes, dal, etc. It's an excellent job, and this entire thing we have done by our own people. So I am thankful to my young and middle management people, along with the leadership team, who has taken a lot of leadership in this crisis time to do the job from the field. And as on today, it was done meticulously. So why I'm sharing this with you, because it has been proven that when there is a requirement and when there's a crisis, you should know how to fight for the crisis. So last 20, 45 days, India power in this area is, has a, is working in such a fashion that our operation should be undisturbed, number one. Number two, our maintenance should be seamless. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing a good information with you. Even in lockdown period, we have connected new consumers. So we got the information from a consumer that has been disconnected by the other utility. So he approached us. So immediately our team by 48 hours reconnect him by our own connections. So why I'm sharing this idea? Because when the lockdown is been relaxed, it's already relaxing from 20th of this and it will be more relaxed from 4th of May. There will be a lot of attitudinal problems. Employees should be trained in such a way so that we should understand that in removal of lockdown in a small area does not mean the lockdown is over for entire India. So working in a micro environment, sitting in a macro environment is very difficult. So what we have done in Asamsol, that can be practiced. And I am sharing you one other thing that from 20th of April, when people have said that Asamsol also in a panchayat area, you can start functioning in industry. So you might think that we are supplying power mostly to the industries. Industry, in spite of their good intention, when they want to operate the thing from 28, there is a basic problem. Basic problem is not all genuine problem. It means there is no public transport anywhere. So when you have no public transport, it is a challenge for organization to bring people for the work. Support number one. Number two, is the instruction by the government that around 25% of the uh, worker may be employed to do this manufacturing activity. Owners also think they are thinking, is it possible to run the operation at 25%? And third point, they also say, we have to organize a stay for everybody inside the campus. It cannot be possible for all the private companies to organize such a huge accommodation where they can arrange, you know, in a, over the night for the entire people to stay. And third is, these people are coming from the different corner of the uh, district. And they are coming from the village also. And there is a mental blockage, my mental mindset, that village people or some semi-urban people basically come out from their village. Their, their idea is, if I go for that particular purpose, I may not come back due to the lockdown problem. So better, there is a better not to go. So in spite of the hunger, some village people have chosen not to go outside. So it's a big problem for the industry to get manpower. Number one, migrant, migrant workforce is not there. Number two, it is very difficult to introduce a concept of accommodation for the workmen. It is not adequate. Number three, proper logistic to bring the people. And port, it's also very important to supply material, raw material. Because, you know, other districts are, may not be lockdown is over. So even that time, there's no interstate boost transfer. So how will get raw material from the outside? So for all this idea, we have seen in Asansol, though government has said from 20th of April, industry can operate but technically it is not happening it is not happening that we are supplying power to industry we have seen that industry in spite of their good intention they are unable to run the show due to this problem which is genuine problems so now the second phase of withdrawal i am expecting yesterday we have seen the circular of the orange zone red, red, red zone and green zone this is that asansol in orange zone the so restriction will be not like as red zone so if it is orange zone, government is given a detailed circular, what to do, what to do, what good practice we should do, and what good practice continue in the next one month down the line. So in spite of that, it is also to be seen the next week, how in spite of that partial opening of the economy in Asansol area, our industry people can operate. As on today, commercial organization, some, something is operating in Asansol, hospitals, some of the uh, other center, uh, uh, health pump center, government center opening, but basically the steel industry, manufacturing industry, they are not operating. So I am confident that with our own support, I am assuring to the people there in Asansol who are running the industry, India power is totally geared up to supply power. 
and also we are supplying power for your last 45 days. My question is, there's no problem in terms of the utilities concept of power, supply power. The question is, how we can manage the manage to run the industry with this constraint where it is difficult to bring people for the organization, where it is difficult to arrange accommodation for the people, and third is whether to maintain the proper health and hygiene because 25% is may not be adequate to run the power run the manufacturing units. So that is basically my plan in this type of workshop, it's always better to go for the question answering. I'm giving the backdrop and just uh, executive summary is India Power is a hundred years old organization and we are a utility for the last 45 days from 21st of March. We are on the floor, we are on the field, we are supplying power, we are managing efficiently all of our substation. Till today, not a single uh, problem has come from the consumer that they're not getting proper power because our people are working for 24 by 7 and 65 days concept and that is very important perhaps you might be knowing that this company used to supply power to the mine when you are supplying power to the mining operation dedication devotion is your part of your dna so with this dna we know how to supply power in crisis so we are supplying that and we have seen that if you really award people what you should do and if you to organize a standard health and hygiene for your employee and proper infrastructure so that he come to our work station properly, he come to office properly, he can go back to residence properly, then people are always ready to work. You know, nobody wants that this type of industry cannot work from home, uh, working from home. Working from home pump set is not there in Asansol area because we are basically from the brick and mortar industry. And this type of industry, you have to work in the field. Technically, I'm, I'm sharing my, my experience See, the one part of the power company called the construction work. Now construction work is being allowed in civil construction, transmission, generation, distribution. But when you are having the construction work, we are getting total support from the local management, local administration, police administration. As per the circular, they're allowing us. The problem is to get the people to for the work. The people, all these workforce are go back to the respective village. And from the particular village, they are unable to come. Because the other people in the village are apprehension. They have the apprehension that if somebody are going out of the village, they may be infected. So for the purpose, they are telling to the people, if you go for the work, you go there, complete your entire job, then come back. So when the construction is over, these people may not be allowed to re-enter the village. For the purpose, it is very difficult to get people from the outside to come for a work. And technically, if you have the people from the nearby, you have to clear transport for them, it's not possible everybody will come by his own bicycle so you have to organize the transport so the biggest challenge for any company right now which is basically the accommodation and the attitude of the people and the logistics we have so far successful we are expecting that this lockdown withdrawal will be smooth and from 4th of may all these problems which were suffering from 20th april till today may not be there and gradually we will proceed further that anybody who wants to work in this withdrawal of lockdown can work well. That is my overall impression, overall presentation to you. So my request, Angona, if there's some specific question, because in my interaction, it is not a lecture, it is not a theoretical lecture, it is a practical sharing. So I am here to address the question. If somebody has any specific question about this restoration and relaxation of lockdown in terms of the injured perspective, if they feel some IR and people management issue, they may ask the question to me. I will try my level best to answer the question. Hello. I'm gonna. I am connected. Yes, sir. You are connected. So my. my so, 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 I'm. Um, the, my presentation was. See, I was narrated the entire story to them, how the Asanso Dugapu belt right now. I am yeah. also telling my people that it is very good that we are in orange zones today, so that better to work for the future. From yes. what of May, we have to we have to know from industry people that orange zone, there is certain thing is given to orange zone. But my submission to all of them, the circular of the Ministry of Home Affairs, which was issued for the 20th April, and today's circular, more or less they are same. There is no big change here. 
only there's a small change in terms of the people are telling that time you can come with, with their own car with the one people along with driver now they are telling few people may come balance basically all the restriction which there on 20th april that will be continuing for green zone obviously they have given some relaxation for the bus with the 50% capacity so my question is asansol which is entire orange zone and surrounded by some like calcutta and other people which is in red zone so in asansol there is and also they have given relaxation this time categorically said the steel industry can be operated in this time but my question what challenge we have seen in the last 10 days for operation of this particular industry may remain there so the question is we should have a positive attitude how to do that and for any question regarding this you may ask me because ultimately the lockdown will continue for another 17 days another two weeks so after 17th of may there is no chance of introducing public transport there is no chance of normalcy in the in the working style so we have to work with the restriction model we have to work with the restriction relaxation model so if anybody who are as a viewer here as any specific question somebody is asking me so they said that private office can be operational from uh, from your private office can be operational from uh, monday onwards i said yes you can operate the private offices based on some category of the work if that is okay if that 50% uh, uh, staff you can operate but you have to follow the guideline only one concept is you can operate but you can operate with some certain condition that condition is important if you feel after maintaining this condition your business is viable or there is a meaning of coming to office after maintaining all this thing it make a sense to you if you feel that it it make no sense to me then we have to rethink about your opening the organization or not but ultimately government has done that to yeah. open economy so you cannot close down everything in spite of the problem with the corona virus there is a tendency opening the economy the government has no other option but to partial opening of the economy and basically the rural economy so for the purpose industry in panchayat area industry in semi urban area are allowed to operate with certain restriction so our responsibility as a citizen of the particular area to support the government and try to boost the particular economy and move away and the way forward with that idea that yes we will operate as per the government circular and with the with the condition at the restriction they have given if we can do that in the win win situation we should take the advantage of this win win situation thank you sir uh, we will uh, move on to our next speakers so we would request the participants if they have any question for mr shomesh dashopta as uh, we have requested you for the earlier speakers you can email to the bengal chamber to suchishmita and shankal pita we will check with mr das gupta and revert to you so our next speakers are uh, Mr. A. C. Agarwala, President of Federation of South Bengal Chamber of Commerce, and Mr. Ajay Kumar Khaitan, Secretary of Jamoria Chamber of Commerce and Industries. So we would request Mr. Agarwala and Mr. Khaitan to uh, join us. So we would start with Mr. Agarwala, and then we would request Mr. Khaitan to uh, take it forward. Mr. Agarwala, please. Good morning, everyone. respected mr indeed sen dr ravin chakravarti mr somna das gupta and learned members i am in industries by profession being the cmd of mythan oil limited a listed company which was selected as the winner of the best growth performance iron and steel by dun and bread seed in 2019 we were also selected in the same year as one of the wealth creators among fortune 500 companies we also featured in the forbes india 200 best under dollar 1 billion list of 2019 wherein only 14 companies in india featured i am honored to head the federation of south bengal chambers of commerce and industry an apex body in south bengal having 40 odd chambers of commerce as its members today i am delighted to share my views on insights on industry in asansol durgapur region industry is the main stay in multiple districts of western part of the state of west bengal the only exception being purva bardhaman where agriculture is the primary employment creator 
Western region is leading in the production of steel and allied industry. <clears throat> has been the basic reason for steel industry to thrive. Having cheap power, proximity to iron ore from Odisha, hub of fertilized industry, and abundant skilled labor has been the success story. These large steel industries have been the driving force of this region. The growth of MSMEs in the region has contributed greatly to the social upliftment. The COVID pandemic suddenly hit us and left us crippling. The West Bengal government's indecision over allowing resumption of with sufficient manpower of continuous <coughs> industry like FT power plants, sponge iron, ferrule oils, pellet manufacturing, and associated rolling mills in the state in view of the COVID-19 pandemic has brought the local steel and iron industries to a grinding halt. In the industry employs over 3 lakh workers in the state who are presently without work and mostly without wages. Hence, industry watchers fear the prospect of disengagement of a large workforce. After the first phase of lockdown expired in 15th April, the government of West Bengal formulated a method of online application of e-passes for the manufacturing industry. The result was extremely disappointing. As permissions were issued to applicants, industries to operate with only 10 to 50 people, even if they had a worker strength of 100 to 1000 in their factories. This was done without acknowledging the fact. <laughs> this, was, this was done without acknowledging the fact that many of the industries are working in three shifts, have a large number of activities and multiple quality control and safety procedures which cannot be compromised. Now, they have started <coughs> issuing permissions for persons per shift, which is a little relaxation. Severe restrictions of restrictions on movement of people to their workplace are also an issue. Diverging views relating to payment of wages during lockdown period has created a voidable mistrust between the workforce and the management. Non-operation of such industries will have significant adverse impact on employment tax collection, and export earnings. 1 lakh crore a month GST revenue earnings of the government of India has been largely impacted. Huge funds are required for meeting the healthcare expenditure, relief to farmers, BPL cardholders, mudra schemes, etc. There is a limit to deficit financing as the same will cause inflation. With no revenue, the infrastructure projects which boost the economy will slow down causing a cascading effect on the steel industry of our area. The future looks bleak. Now, coming to the present scenario, it will be worthwhile to note the following. The present road movement of goods is only 20% of the required level caused by drivers going away to their native states when lockdown was being implemented. Trucks are stranded without drivers. Even the willing drivers cannot come back because of lockdown. There are no funds with the management to give idle wages to the workmen. Interest burdens on the businesses are rising. Industries are wrongly forced to pay demand charges for the connected power. Many states have given relief from demand charges to the industries, but government of West Bengal is no mood to do so. Not even allow consumers to get relief from DVC, wherein the government has no financial impact. There is just no justice. If things get worse, unruly incidents will emerge. We urgently need to take stock of the situation and form a balanced view regarding the way forward, wherein containment of COVID-19 is one of the considerations, instead of being the sole motive to be achieved through administrative decision making. My suggestions are as follows. Allow manufacturing industries to operate with 50% workforce due to expansion of municipal areas in, a large, in the last decade. As per revenue records, a large number of industries fall under municipalities and municipal corporations wherein facilities like healthcare, sanitation, water supply, drainage, transport connectivity is extremely poor. Even the population density is low in those areas. Such units should be allowed to operate and the municipal boundaries should be redrawn. Many industries are located in industrial areas and clusters, both within and outside the municipal boundaries. These clusters were formed after undertaking a thorough environment and social impact analysis. All such units should be permitted to operate smoothly. Drug drivers standard in other states should be allowed to return. Idle wages be paid by the government or through ESI PF. The relaxation from payment of ESI and PF and bonuses 
be given to the industry for the next two years. Without financial support, a large number of industries would collapse and close down. We need reduction in interest rates, reduction in margins with the banks, and additional working capital requirements without further securities. Either the government announces a financial package for industry to survive, or it will face a situation where a large number of NPAs and bad debts of the banks will emerge. The decision is better left to the wise judgment of the finance ministry. Government infrastructure spending will has to increase to increase the demand for steel. Government increases the minimum wages of workers twice a year based on inflation index. There would be a need to cap the wage structure for a period of three years. Market forces to determine the pay scales. Higher wages lead to higher rent automation and thus reducing employment opportunities. Hence, at the end of the cycle, high minimum wages hurt the very mass it was supposed to protect. The government valuation of land property in the districts is much more than the market price, especially Pashim Bardhavan. Interested person cannot buy land because if they pay stamp duty at for higher valuation, they are caught in a mess with the income tax department. Now I would like to touch upon long-term perspectives and problems of the steel industry in our region. Eastern region has a rich deposit of iron ore and many steel plants, large, medium, and MSMEs were set up here. A mushroom of magnesium alloys plants also came up, mainly in the state of West Bengal, to feed the requirement of the steel industry. Magnesium alloy is the raw material to steel making, without which steel cannot be manufactured. Kalimantan Island in Southeast Asia is largely owned by Indonesia and part of it by Malaysia. On this part of the island owned by Malaysia, they have 2000 megawatt of hydro power, cost of which in Indian currency is about rupees 220 per unit. Again, the average industrial cost in East India of about rupees 5 per unit. <coughs> power is the basic raw material in magnesium alloy production. About 4200 units of power is required to manufacture one ton of magnesium alloys. In the last few years, a large, a large number of capacity, a large number of magnesium plants with huge capacities started production in Malaysia using cheap power there. The difference in the cost of production due to cost of power loan is higher than 20% in India. Because of a free trade treaty between India and Malaysia, magnesium alloys are being dumped into India, throwing these industries into doldrums and two lakh people employed in this trade in Eastern India are under threat of unemployment. Similarly, steel is being dumped into India by China, harming the Indian industry. The central government during this force major time can easily block imports of steel from China and many others from Malaysia, or at least impose heavy import duties by passing the free trade agreements. This will give the steel industry in Asansol Durgapur region level playing field. I would request the leadership of the renowned Bengal Chamber to pick up the matter with the central government. I leave it to the wide judgment of the audience to form their own views and the subject on the subject cited by me. Thank you. Takers, we would request the organizations, either the, uh, I mean, the companies or the chambers of commerce. You can please write to the Bengal Chamber to me, Ongona, that is A N G A N A, and BengalChamber.com, and we will have an internal discussion and take it up, take it up appropriately. So over to Mr. Khaitan now. Good morning to all. Myself, Fajek Kumar Khaitan, Secretary, Jamla Chamber of Commerce and Industries. By profession, very small traders, running three petrol pumps, and. Uh, Lubricant distributors for Pashtim Bardhavan district. Uh, I will speak in Hindi. Jaisa ki abhi hum log discuss kar rahe the apne kya adoption hona chahiye after lockdown. Lockdown ke samay mein kya kya problems hum logon ne face ki aur lockdown ke baad hum log kya kya problem face karenge. Ye hum logon ka main hi hai. Jamle Chamber of Commerce and Industries ne lockdown mein jo face kiya aur jo serve kiya with the help of uh, police authorities. We have served 28,000 families to food. And in this case, we have done a lot of work. We have done a lot of work in the event in district judge building, Asansol, Jail Khana, and many industries in the area. 
हमारा ये कहना है कि अभी इंडस्ट्री जब चालू होंगी तो उसके पहले हमें जो मेजर स्टेप लेने होंगे कि हमारे वर्कर्स हमारे लेबर सारे ठीक रहे उसके लिए एटलीस्ट जो मैंने एक सजेशन गवर्नमेंट को भेजा भी था पर गवर्नमेंट ने उसको एक्सेप्ट भी किया कि हमारे जो मेन गेट्स हैं और जो हमारे सिक्योरिटीज हैं उनके पास सैनिटाइजर की पूरी व्यवस्था होनी चाहिए सैनिटाइजेशन के लिए मास्क होने चाहिए ग्लव्स होने चाहिए और कोई भी गाड़ियां चूंकि अब इंडस्ट्रीज को परमिशन मिल गया है पार्शियली चालू करने का मेन गेट पे ही करें एंड उसके बाद ही इंटर करने का उनको अलाउ करें साथ ही साथ ड्राइवर एंड क्लीनर को दोनों को मास्क अगर नहीं है उनके पास लगाया हुआ तो मास्क हम लोग प्रोवाइड करें प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर रविंद चक्रवर्ती से सुन रहा था कि उन्होंने बहुत अच्छी बातें कही कि हमारे जो लेबर्स हैं स्टाफ है उनको हमें मोटिवेट करना चाहिए एचआर डिपार्टमेंट के द्वारा ताकि उनके हाथ प्रॉपरली वॉश किए जा सके और हर घंटे वो हाथ को क्लीन करें इवन आंख को कान को नाक को टच ना करें नो डोंट टच हिज माउथ और ये हमें एडॉप्शन करना चाहिए सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग का हमें बिल्कुल ख्याल रखना चाहिए कि सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग कैसे मेंटेन हो क्योंकि कोरोना जिस तरह की महामारी है अगर हम इसको अवेयर रहते हैं तो कोरोना ऐसी कोई भयंकर बीमारी जिस तरह डॉक्टर रविंद चक्रवर्ती सर ने कहा मैं उनकी बात से बिल्कुल एग्री करता हूँ कि ये महामारी उसी केस में है अगर हम केयरलेस होते हैं अगर हम केयरफुल हैं तो ये उतनी बड़ी पेंडेमिक नहीं होगी हमारे लिए और बंगाल के पीपल जो हैं वो काफी अवेयरनेस वाले पीपल हैं साथ ही साथ हमें फैक्ट्री में अपने गर्म पानी का भी ट्रीटमेंट का अरेंजमेंट रखना चाहिए जो सबसे बड़ी प्रॉब्लम आएगी लॉकडाउन के बाद अप्रैल महीने की फुल सैलरी के लिए गवर्नमेंट जिस तरह से प्रेसराइज कर रही है मुझे नहीं लगता कि आने वाले समय में छोटी इंडस्ट्रीज अपने आप को सर्वाइव कर पाएगी क्योंकि दे आर क्वाइट अनएबल टू पे द फुल सैलरी फॉर द फॉर द मंथ ऑफ अप्रैल सॉरी गवर्नमेंट ने अपने एम की सैलरी को थर्टी परसेंट कम किया है तो हमारा ये थ्रू बंगाल चैंबर ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्रीज के थ्रू गवर्नमेंट के पास ये मैसेज देने का एक प्रस्ताव है कि गवर्नमेंट को इसके लिए इंसिस्ट किया जाए कि 30 परसेंट तो इमीडिएट कट होना चाहिए इसके अलावा ईएसआईसी और इम्प्लॉयर ईपीएफ में जिस तरह से गवर्नमेंट कंट्रीब्यूशन कर रही है बट ईएसआईसी में नहीं कर रही है तो उसी तर्ज पे सैलरी का भी जो है वो प्रोविजन होना चाहिए कि गवर्नमेंट को भी कुछ सैलरी उसमें कंट्रीब्यूट करनी चाहिए बिकॉज दोज हु आर सिटिंग एट द रेसिडेंस उनको कुछ ना कुछ दिया जा रहा है हर तरह से ऐसा नहीं है कि वो बिल्कुल बैठे हुए हैं उनको कहीं चैरिटी नहीं हो रही है सभी चैंबर ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज को कोई सपोर्ट नहीं मिलता है तो दे मे बी कोलैप्स इसमें कोई बोलने की दो गुंजाइश नहीं है साथ ही साथ जहां तक अभी हमारे प्रेसिडेंट फोजी मिस्टर रिस्पेक्टेड सुभाष अग्रवाला जी ने भी कहा कि इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बिल इसके लिए हम गवर्नमेंट को इंसिस्ट करें कि ऑन कंजम्पन एक्चुअल कंजम्पन के ऊपर उसका बिल होना चाहिए न कि मिनिमम गारंटी के साथ चूंकि पेंडेमिक जो है ये कोई सौ साल दो साल में एक बार आती है तो इसमें जो उनका यूनियन यूनिफॉर्म एक्ट एक्ट है बनाया हुआ या मऊ साइन किया हुआ है दैट शुड नॉट बी कंप्लाई विद मेरा यही कहना है इसके अलावा मैं यही कहूंगा समय दस गुप्ता ने जो कहा था कि हम लोग जिस तरह के क्षेत्र में रहते हैं वहां पर वर्क फ्रॉम होम इज नॉट पॉसिबल बिकॉज क्योंकि हम लोग को फील्ड में जाके ही वर्क करना पड़ेगा और ये हमारे अवेयरनेस से ही हम अपनी फैक्ट्री को बचा सकते हैं हमारे लोगों को बचा सकते हैं और साथ ही साथ सोमेश्वर दास गुप्ता जी से मैं ये अनुरोध भी करूंगा क्योंकि वो भी इंडिया पावर कॉर्पोरेशन लिमिटेड के ग्रुप प्रेसिडेंट भी हैं तो सर आप प्लीज देखिए इसको कि ऑन एक्चुअल कंजम्पन बेसिस इलेक्ट्रिसिटी का हम लोग क्या कर सकते हैं थैंक यू थैंक यू वी हैव Uh, as i mentioned whether the companies or uh, the chamber of commerce uh, you may please send the recommendations to me on bengal chamber uh, ongon at bengalchamber.com we will internally take it up and with internal approval we will do the needful so thank you for joining us we are closing the session here in case you have further queries on the subject specific to today's program 
you may please email to shankal pita and shruti smita and we will take it up with the speakers we'll connect with the respective speakers and email back to you thank you everybody thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you.